So it's looking like high inflation is here to stay. CPI numbers for January came back at 6.4%, which is really just a 0.1% reduction from December's number of 6.5. So high inflation is getting really sticky. This is putting a lot of pressure on their Fed and their 2% inflation goal. So they're gonna need to continue to raise rates and keep them high for even longer, probably all throughout 2023. As the Fed makes money more expensive by raising rates, this is going to impact companies and their earnings. Companies aren't going to make as much money as they used to, and this is going to translate to laying off their employees. The head of the Fed, Jerome Powell, literally said it himself, that when the Fed in the past tried to lower high inflation, this leads to a softening of the labor market. He's essentially saying that unemployment is going to get worse, layoffs are going to happen more often, and the recession is going to hit. So if you're anything like me, you're preparing now before the worst actually comes. So now is the time to prepare. In this video, I want to share with you seven things on what I'm doing now to prepare for the recession. Towards the end of the video, I want to share with you how we can actually profit from this downturn. And before we get into it, thank you so much for liking and subscribing to the channel. I'm trying to get this channel monetized. So the first goal is to get to a thousand subscribers. So really, really appreciate it. And thank you so much for subscribing. Starting off with number one is start to really bolster your emergency fund. It emerges emergency fund is just a pile of cash that you use for a rainy day. So in this situation, the rainy day would be you getting laid off at your job. When you get laid off at your job, you can of course begin to apply for unemployment benefits, but that usually takes about a month or so to get your first check. So that month, you're literally going to have no income coming in. And even when you do get your first check, it's going to be less than how much you used to make when you were working. Your first goal with this emergency fund is to try to save up three months worth of expenses. So where if you lose your income, you're still able to afford your lifestyle for the next three months as you look for your next job. If you have three months, try to go for six. And after six, try to go for a year. If you have a year, it's a great place to be. You're chilling, not needing to an ASAP, try to find your next job and stressing out. So if you're sitting there now thinking, I can barely even save any money, let alone build up an emergency fund, Jimmy. What I would tell you is now is the time to really buckle down and start cutting out all unnecessary expenses cancel future vacations. This is not going out to eat for lunch and dinner. This is not getting that morning coffee or anything that you can possibly come up with to save all that extra money now, because now is the time to do it while you still have your job. Because if you lose your job, you're not going to be able to even afford any of that stuff anyways, and you're going to have to cut out all of that stuff. So now is the time to cut it out, save all that extra money to where if you get laid off, you are safe. Moving on to number two is to try to pay off some of your debt. So if you have interest rates that are kind of high, like 5% or more, even credit card debt that's like 20%, definitely try to tackle those first and pay those off. Because with your emergency fund, you won't need to save up as much money because if you don't have any debt, that's an expense that you don't need to pay for. But I would also recommend that it's kind of a balancing act about number one, about building up an emergency fund and also about paying debt. Because if you think about it, if you try to pay off all your debt immediately all at once and then say the next day you get laid off, well, you threw in all of that extra money that you have to pay off debt and you don't have zero emergency funds to hold you over. And so it's kind of a balancing act that you need to play. So definitely tackle your debt, but also at the same time, try to also save up for that emergency fund. Moving on to number three, which will really help with number one and number two is to pick up as much income as you possibly can. If there's overtime hours, at your job that will help you make a little bit more money, definitely take that on if you didn't before. Also, if you have any other side business, if you have freelance gigs that you want to do, if you have anything that you can sell to make extra money, now is really the time to do it. Bolster up your income to where you can build up that emergency fund faster or pay off debt sooner. Moving on to number four is that if you've achieved the first three, which is building up that emergency fund, paying off debt, and also bolstering your income, Income, you have this pile of cash now. Definitely don't just leave it in your checkings account where it's not working for you and it's not gaining any interest. Emergency fund could be thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars. So if you move that over to a high yield,
yield savings account that brings in over 4% of interest at this moment in time, that could build up even more money as the money kind of just sits there and you don't really have to do anything. So these high yield savings account, there's many of them out there, but the one that I personally use is called Wealthfront. And they're paying like 4.05%. So you could transfer your money in there, have it sit there gaining interest and you don't have to do anything. Moving on to number five is to revisit your resume, add any new extra experience that you have, or maybe even consider revamping the whole thing, update your LinkedIn account, any cover letters or anything like that. Now is the time to do it so that if you did get laid off, you're not spending extra time, couple weeks to update your resume, it's all ready to go. Moving on to number six is if you've been able to achieve all of those things up until this point, you're doing so great for yourself. And so number six really is to just fine tune everything, look into some expenses where you thought were necessary, which might not be necessary and you could possibly make improvements. Just for example, if you have an expensive apartment and your lease is ending, maybe you can consider looking for a cheaper apartment and saving a couple hundred dollars there. Another idea is if you have an expensive car, now is the time to sell it because it's looking like the car market is headed downwards quickly. So now would be the time to sell your expensive car, make that extra profit as the prices are decently still high. Also, you're able to save some money as far as your insurance premiums by just switching to a more economy car. I would even take it as far as if you have an expensive girlfriend or boyfriend or spouse, maybe now would be the time to drop them if they're not on board with your plan. Moving on to number seven, and if you've made it this far, thank you so much, you are the best. So very last one is to just try to be the best investor that you can be by learning as much as you can, know what the Fed is doing and how that affects the economy and how that affects stocks so that you can make the proper predictions on your investments to profit off of all of this. So like I said earlier in the video, how do we actually profit off of this downturn? If you are preparing to be laid off, but say you didn't get laid off and you're one of the few survivors that kept your job, now you have all of this cash that you saved up. If you saved up all of this cash and you don't really need it for that rainy day, you can deploy it when the market is low buy low, sell high. So as the recession hits and the market starts to bottom, it's time to begin to buy in. And over time, eventually when the stock market begins to roll back over and make all time highs, you'll feel very happy that you bought during those lows and that's how you profit off of this recession. All right guys, that is about it for this video. If you enjoyed it and learned a thing or two, definitely hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel. My name is Jimmy Invest and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.